Welcome to the Computer Telephony Integration Demonstration. Within the next few minutes, you will learn what is available with the ServiceNow CTI out-of-the-box integration. Furthermore, you will gain a better understanding of what your computer telephony product will need to be able to do in order to leverage this integration. During the course of the demo, I'm going to use an application that I created specifically for showing the various features of the CTI integration. This program is not really a computer telephony program, but it tries to mimic a potential interface that you might find out in the field. You can also play with this program on, on your own by browsing to http colon forward slash forward slash www.john-james-anderson.com forward slash tools forward slash cti.php. Since the ServiceNow product is a web-based application, a third-party computer telephony program will need to be able to have the capability of launching a web browser or open an embedded web browser control and direct that browser window to a dynamic URL. The third-party telephony program should be able to take values from the current call and stuff them into the URL as URL parameters that will then be used to open the ServiceNow browser window. I will go ahead and set up my demo application so that it is configured to communicate with the ServiceNow instance of my choice. When I set up this URL, the demo application also provides me some guidance on what I need to do within my own ServiceNow instance in order to demo the scenarios provided within the tool. These instructions are only for demo purposes to help you understand some of the options in the integration. I've gone ahead and already filled in uh, these points of sample data within my instance for this demo. All right, now once I have the application all set up, I'm going to log in as a fake user and run the simulation of a call center application. Since I'm going to do a demo, I'm going to go ahead and enable the demo mode on my application so that I can get screen tips that explain what the scenario will be and what the action will, will, will be that will take place with regard to ServiceNow. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to click the Enable Demo Mode button. Once I've clicked that, you'll see that the button text will change and allow me to disable it later if I need to. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to take the top call off my queue. Now as I hover over the top caller, who is Beth Anglin, the application will give me a brief overview of the scenario that we should expect in this case. Now in this scenario, our telephony program was able to identify the person's name that came through with the call. Now in this case, this name exactly matches a user within our ServiceNow user table. So when we click on the ServiceNow button, we should expect that the user record will be displayed with a list of the open tickets uh, logged by this user, as well as configuration items assigned to that user. Let's go ahead and click on Beth England to accept the call. Now we will assume that we will chat with Beth and determine that she's calling about an incident that she has already opened. Now if we hover over the Open Service Now button, the demo app will show you the URL that's going to be pushed into the default browser on my computer. In this case, you can see the integration URL as being the name of my instance with um, a slash and the page being cti.do. Since we have a caller's name, the demo app will need to pass a URL parameter called sysparm underscore caller underscore name. The application then gives the value of Beth England into that URL parameter. So if we click on the Open Service Now button, a browser will be launched and as expected, the user record for Beth England is displayed, along with a little bit of information about her, as well as her open incidents, and also assigned configuration items. Now in this case, Beth only has one incident open, and this is likely the incident she's calling about. Now if we click on the configurations items tab, we can also see that Beth has three devices assigned to her. We can use that information as, as we help her troubleshoot her issue. Okay, now let's take on another similar scenario. We'll close the browser and go back to our telephony app application. As we take the next call in the queue, the scenario is slightly different. 
but the outcome should be relatively the same. Instead of getting a username from the telephony application, we're only seeing a phone number. However, that phone number is listed as a phone number for a user within ServiceNow. So let's go ahead and take the call and see what happens. Now, in this scenario, if we were to open ServiceNow, the URL parameter changes to be sysparm caller phone instead of sysparm caller name. The user's phone number is then inserted as the value. So let's click the Open Service Now button. Now as you can see, the user in this case does not have any incidents that are currently open. So ServiceNow doesn't open the user record um, as it did in the prior instance but instead it opens up a new incident form and pre-fills that incident form with the caller name uh, based on the caller information from the telephony program. Let's close the browser and take on yet another scenario. Within this third scenario, we're going to receive a call from a number that is not listed on any user record within ServiceNow. So let's go ahead and take the call. And now that we're taking the call, let's take some notes from the person on the phone. Now let's say that a person is experiencing a tough time logging into their email account ever since they had to change their password two days ago. So we're going to enter that information here in the technician's note just to, you know, mention that they had changed their password a couple days ago and now they can't log into their email account. Now if we hover over the button that will submit to ServiceNow, we can see the URL that is generated that's going to post both the caller's phone number as well as the technician's notes. Notice that the notes that are going to, are going to be passed through as a variable called sysparm underscore comments. The CTI integration will strip off that sysparm underscore uh, portion of the URL parameter and try to find a field on the incident table called comments. It'll then insert that text in the corresponding field. So in this example, the text will be placed in the comments field of the incident record that would be, that would be opened. Now if we wanted to go to the short description field instead, we would just change the URL parameter to be sysparm underscore short underscore description uh, instead of sysparm underscore comments. However, for this example, we're going to stick uh, to posting the technician notes to the comment field. So let's go ahead and click the button that will open up the browser. As you can see, we have a new incident record and the additional comments field is pre-filled with the text from the technician notes. Any field on the incident form can be pre-filled by the telephony application by following this, that simple URL parameter naming convention of sysparm underscore and then the actual table field name. It's important to understand that it is the actual field name of the table, not the field label that you use in the URL parameter. Now we're going to again close the browser and go back to the demo CTI tool. In this fourth scenario, we're going to take a call from a user who is identifying an open incident ticket right off the bat. Our CTI tool could be configured such that if the technician were to type in the incident number, we could open up that specific incident directly. In this case, let's assume that the incident number that the customer is calling about is INC0000049. Now, if we hover over the Open Service Now button, we can see the URL that will be formed here. The new URL parameter that will be passed in this case is going to be sysparm underscore task underscore ID. This URL parameter will tell the system to open up the incident record specified. Let's try it out. There we go. The incident number 49 has been opened. We can see that this has been assigned to Bo already and that it's affecting a specific storage device. Okay, let's move away from the demo application now and just talk about the integration itself. First, let's review some of the parameters that we demonstrated with the fake CTI tool. The following is a list of filled parameters in order of precedence handled by the integration out of the box. With the caller name and caller phone fields, the user record is going to be displayed if that user has any outstanding tickets that have yet to be closed. Now if there are no open tickets, then a new incident record will be displayed and the caller is automatically going to be filled in with the appropriate caller name um, as identified by the name parameter or the phone parameter. 
Now, if there is no name or phone parameter being passed, but there is an incident number being passed, then that incident will be opened and displayed in the browser. If a new incident is being created because either the caller name or phone number does not exist in the system, or the caller does not have any open incidents, or there is no caller identified, then the new incident record form will be displayed and any fields that are specified uh, will be passed in via the URL using that naming convention of sysparm underscore and then the field name. Now they'll have those values pre-filled in the corresponding fields on the incident form. Let's talk about some of the other URL parameters that play an important part within the CTI integration. The sysparm view URL parameter allows you to specify a specific view of the user record that should be opened up within ServiceNow uh, when the integration triggers the browser. The sysparm CTI rule URL parameter allows you to customize the actual processing of the CTI integration. If you don't like the current processing flow or if it doesn't fit your business needs, you can create your own business rule and write down the flow of your choice. Uh, then when your third-party telephony application submits the URL to ServiceNow, um, you can have the URL parameters coded to reference your custom rule by passing in this URL parameter. For more information on this integration, don't forget to browse the ServiceNow wiki and simply just search for the keyword CTI. From there, you're going to get more information about the URL parameters that we've discussed as well as some examples designed by ServiceNow themselves. Thanks for watching this video. You should now be aware of what exactly the out-of-box computer telephony integration consists of, as well as what your telephony product will need to do in order to leverage this integration. Thanks once again, and have a fabulous day.